Hey guys, this is my first video, so try to bear with me. It's probably not going to be very good. Definitely not up to par with the Khan Academy videos, but information is information, whatever. So in this video, I'll try to be teaching you guys a little bit about re... I have really bad handwriting, by the way, and I'm using a mouse. Sorry. Recombinance. Just the very basics. I'm not a genetics teacher, so I can't teach it too in-depth, but... As a student who took the class, I can teach you how I approach these. So recombinance, to, to deal with these types of problems, you first have to go back and just, I guess I'll, I'll just start with an example and then it'll kind of make sense from there. So let's say we have a father, say F for the father, right? And then let's say his genotype is, let's see, he has a big A, little b, and he has uh, that's on one chromosome. And then let's say he has a little a big B. And then if you're not familiar with this type of notation, if you just look through your genetics notes or something, it'll it'll make more sense. This is the standard way of being a little more specific than just writing out the pure genotype. We're actually telling what chromosome each thing's on. So this is kind of... This is kind of the same thing as saying big A, little a big B, little b, except it's a little more specific. It actually tells us, oh, these two are on chromosome, these two are on chromosome. Okay. So let's say that's the father's genotype. And let's say we also have a mother, oops, it's a little big, whatever, who has genotype little a, little b, little a, little b. So using our knowledge from biology, which you should have hopefully taken by now, we know that when cells divide, you're going to get, like when, when we have some type of sexual reproduction, the father passes on one of the chromosomes, the mother passes on the other chromosome. So that means we have to get one of these two from the father and one of these two from the mother. So that means they do their thing and then ideally it makes sense that we should get, mother has to give little a, little b, right? Because both of them are little a, little b, so it doesn't matter which one she gives. And then it makes sense from just basic reproduction that the father should give either this or that with equal chances. So we're looking at, we're expecting big A, little b. little a, little b, or little a, big b. Let me write that down. Uh, little a, little b, right? This makes sense that we get little a, little b no matter what from the mother, and then from the father we get either big a, little b, or we get little a, big b. So I'm going to box this. So what we just did is we did this entire thing assuming that we don't have any recombination. Recombination is basically just the crossing over between these two um, alleles. Uh, you know, you learned when the two chromosomes are next to each other, they can cross over and exchange genetic information. Whatever, you already learned that in biology class, so I won't go over it. But yeah, basically what's going on is this is assuming no crossing over occurred which isn't necessarily safe to assume. So I'm going to call this the non-recombinant. So any offspring that have these two genotypes, we know recombination didn't occur. Because, right, we just strictly pulled it. So in a, when you get a problem like this, you're going to get a bunch of different genotypes, including these two. These two are almost certainly they probably should certainly be the biggest. And then it's going to say, what's the percent, or like, what's the recombinance frequency between these two alleles? What does that mean? Let's see. I'll give an example. What if they told us that this father and this mother had 1,000 offspring? I'll say off because it's hard to type. Let's say they had 1,000 offspring. Let's say that. I'm use blue. 
let's say that 400 of them were big A, little a, little b, little b. 400 more of them were little a, little a, big b, little b. And the other, the other, what is it? The other 200, they just scattered as another variation of these two that aren't these. Um, I don't want to write specific numbers because I'm not going to be dealing with it right now, but yeah, just different stuff. Okay. Oh, actually, uh, yeah, whatever, I'll just write it. So let's say it's 100, sorry, 100, uh, big A, little a, big B, little b, oh, it's 100, and 100, little a, little a, little b, little b. Well, as you can tell, these okay, so we know that the mother had to give little a little b. So that means in each of the offspring, we know there's a little a and a little b that came from the mother. Little a, little b, little a, little b, little a, little b. So that means what's left had to have come from the father. So this one, we have a big A and a little b coming from the father, which, oh, that makes sense. That was one of the original chromosomes. We have in this one a little a and a big B coming from the father, which oh, also makes sense. Here we have a big A, big B. No, not seeing that in the original. Okay, little a, little b, also not seeing that in the original. So what happened with these two? This is where recombination occurred, where you had crossing over in between these two, um, in between these two genes, and then you know they they flipped essentially. You flipped right here. So how do we calculate the recombinance frequency? So we know that these are non-recombinant genotypes. We already established that. A, B, A, B, like big A, little B, little A, little B, or little A, big B, little A, little B. So we know that these two are non-recombinant. So that means, no, what color should I use? I'll use red. That means that these two are our recombinant, right? So recombinant frequency, any type of frequency you usually, I mean, it's recombinant frequency is pretty much just a probability. It's saying, what's the probability that we're gonna get recombination, right? So in this case, what is that probability? You should know from basic statistics, or if you watch the other statistics videos that I put on here already, that probability of some event occurring is equal to the number of whatever that event is so maybe like probability of heads how many times heads there are divided by the total outcomes if you're drawing from a bag and there's 10 blue balls out of 15 balls total and what's the probability of drawing a blue ball? 10 out of 15. Makes sense. Number of what you have divided by the total number of what you could get. So in this case, I told you that recombinance frequency is just what's the probability of have, re having recombination between these two? Well, we already established that we have 100 here and 100 here. Both of these are recombinant. So that means we have 100 plus 100 which equals 200 total recombinant. So I'll write that. Yeah, I'll write that in purple. So that means we have 200 recombinant divided by use blue. This 1,000 total. So then, doing basic algebra, two over ten equals, sorry that looks really ugly, that's an arrow, so that means we have one fifth as our recombination frequency, yep, I hope that makes sense, so basically when you're given these types of problems, you want to try to see what are the like expected, expected genotypes coming from the parents, 
usually they'll give you one of the parents as homozygous recessive, which you know that has to have little a, little b, or whatever your allele names are. And then they give you the one that you're actually testing. So when you're given a recombination frequency problem, you usually want to see what are my non-recombinant genotypes and how many of the offspring don't have that. Usually my tackle is I find how many of the offspring do have that because you'll, you'll end up dealing with like maybe three alleles, four alleles, whatever. So it's usually easier to find out how many do have this and then do total minus that to find how many don't, but whatever you want. Recombination is just how many recombinant times you have divided by the total. So that's all for this video. Hopefully that was helpful.